What's up guys, your boy Chef from Off The Dome back in with another video. Today we're talking about how you can be framed and this is a real life case of how someone was framed in my opinion. So, yeah, prisoner Lemuel Smith, serial killer, killed I believe seven people, what it says on his wiki, seven people, but if you take away the person I'm about to say he didn't kill, is six. He did it to different women across basically the late 70s into the 80s. Um, Donna Payot was a corrections officer that served at um, Green, I forget the name of the prison, Green something prison in New York, maximum security prison, and 1,500 inmates. Now, she got murdered in 1981, and this was the year that basically they let women's correctional officers start serving in the United States, I believe. And she had conflict with many of the guards and prisoners, and she wasn't corrupt like the rest of them. They said she, on multiple occasions she was a whistleblower on the way she filed a sexual assault claim. She started talking about how they were doing, how they sold coke to the prisoners, how they were letting prisoners do certain things. They was getting prostitutes, etc. Donna Payant was a dangerous, dangerous, dangerous liability to the New York State correctional system. And someone like her was to get a hold of Fox, CNN. But at the time, I think Fox just came out. Fox wasn't as big, but CNN, NBC, CBS, ABC. New York Times, Time Magazine, etc. She was able to, and she lives in New York, remember, this is New York State. If she was able to get a letter to one of these columnists or even tell on these, um, oh, I ain't got this hair on my mouth. Tell on these state officials that they're doing these illegal activities with inmates, this could bust the whole system. This single handedly could have changed the way that correctional facilities are done in the United States. This might have actually changed for the better. And People don't understand, but this murder of Danya Payant might have been something to silence more corrections officers and police officers from telling the truth and from actually doing their job instead of being dirty corporate chills. Her murder represents how the United States does not want people to tell the truth and they do not want honest people in office. They don't want honest people as your police officers. So for all those people that cry about racism and injustice and not being treated fairly and being overtaxed in the United States, not just saying her murder, but this is one main murder right here. I think if this murder would not have happened, she would have been a whistleblower and she would have got things changed. Maybe there would be a difference in what we see in the country today with our police corrections officers, state officials, and etc. But we would never know because she was murdered in, I believe, mid-1981. Her body was thrown away. They found her in a, they found her in a prison landfill about a week later. Now, they obviously... The only clue and evidence they had was that someone inside the prison had done this. They said she had a call, and she said she had taken some business. That was the last time they seen her. It was a call she got from someone. They don't know who was on the phone. And with Lemuel Smith, this is where he comes in. They said there was a bite mark on it. Now, I watched multiple documentaries and seen this bite mark myself. And I had to see cases where bite marks are not admissible in court because you can't positively match it all the time. Now, they said he had a... The bite mark matched the person who bit her and had an undersized tooth or a tooth that had fallen out. His teeth had fallen out, that one tooth. The problem is they admit that this bite mark could have came from her being crushed in the trash compactor and being thrown in the landfill. They said every bone in her body was broken. Multiple bruises and abrasions were made there. This already tampered evidence, but they still decided to prosecute Lemuel Smith. And even though he's a dirty, bad dude, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna say nothing. I mean, he deserves to be, first of all, he already confessed a lot of other murders. So he deserves to be there currently. He's 78, he's old, he's riding away in jail. He deserves to be there. Don't make no mistake about it. He deserves to be there. But I think that prisoners use this as an opportunity to hide them killing her and blame it on him because this bite mark, he made a good point in his Forensic Files interview. How come everything else is all bruised and abrased and scattered up, but that bite mark is the one clear thing they had left on her body. They knew that was his signature part of his killings that he bite the victim, so they knew this is something they could frame him with. And also, he's the ideal person to frame because he became a pastor and, uh, you know, he became a, a pastor, you know, inside the prison. He had multiple privileges. He was one of the model prisoners that had access to these things, so they knew they could frame him. They don't even know who the phone call that called her that day when she went missing. They don't even know who it came from. So how can you say it's Lemuel Smith when you don't know who called her? And they said she also had a scuffle with a corrections officer about a week before her murder. They said she also had another scuffle with someone. And then finally, the person who 
did a sexual assault against her. I don't know if it's rape, they said sexual assault, which can be a variety of things. It could be actual physical contact, penetration, or could be just grabbing the titties or butt. So I don't know which one, but either way, something inappropriate has happened. And many forensic scientists and even her own family, her sister and her mother, believe that Lamil Smith didn't do this. That says a lot when they have a convicted serial killer who killed six other women say that he didn't kill her. But anyway, that's all I got to say, man. It's Chef from Off the Dome. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Do you think that this murder is one that silenced the one whistleblower that could have saved the correctional system in the United States? Or do you think I'm tripping? Do you think this guy belongs to be in jail? He needs to stay there, which he does. But do you think they should add this murder to him just because he already has six? I think that's unjust. I don't care if I kill 80, 100 people. You shouldn't just add this person to them if there's no evidence. That's unfair. That's unjust. But oh well. It's no harm really done. Well, there's harm done, but there's no harm done to him because either way, at the time he was already a life, he already was, he already got convicted of the six crimes. He was sentenced to death. They made it a life sentence because New York outlawed the death penalty, I think, at the time. Then they, when he did this, they sentenced him to death again. Then he took away the death sentence, and now he's in jail riding for us his life. And now he's in a 23-hour-a-day maximum security prison. So it sucks for him, but then again, he already killed six people, so I don't feel that bad for the dude, but... Justice is justice, and we should have did something about this. So let me know what you think. This is your boy Chef from Off the Dome. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. We got new videos coming for you every day. This is the Wednesday video we're doing today. I also have another video coming out tonight, probably a Wednesday wrap-up episode where we're going to be talking about Tiger's new deal to Columbia Records. We're talking about a man that got shot down in Shaka Bomb in Richmond. Then we're talking about the 6 9 deal and seeing if it's even a real thing or is it just hyped by XXL Magazine. I'm your boy Chef from Off the Dome. Peace out.